Video is rolling. Danny and Tom going flying on the North Shore, and I will apologize right now. This is going to be so much fun. You may change your hobbies. I've had friends change their careers, quite a few of them, believe it or not. So the first thing we do before we take the runway is we raise the wing up and we look for traffic. All right, you'll never see him do that. And there's only the, the skydiving plane and the other trike, but I do this out of habit, so I'll never forget to do it. Later in, later in the day, there's more aircraft. So that habit teaches me to look for traffic. Sure. Before you go out on the runway, you make a call. And you could hear that he didn't make that. We're gonna make a call. Don't have traffic, Paradise 2, taking the active will be departing to the west. So go ahead and put your right hand right here and your left hand here. Now, do you have any flying background at all? It's so far, uh, you know, I took a couple lessons in uh, Cessna 152, but cool. it was when I was a kid. All right, cool. Well, some of the things are gonna be real sim similar. And uh, the takeoff, for instance, we wanna keep our wing level on takeoff and landing. This bar in front of us is parallel with the wing. All right, so if I just keep it like this, and I'll do all the muscle. If we just keep this bar parallel with the runway, manifest company. our wing will be level. Now, as I start accelerating with the foot throttle, more and more air is flowing over the wing, and if we did nothing but go faster, we'll lift right off the ground. What I like to do is to pull our weight forward. It's like leaning on the nose of your board. You can feel my elbows back here. So I got my weight on the nose, like you're leaning on the nose of a surfboard, and when you want to lift off, you let up on that weight, and up you go. So, very simple process. Wings level, and we're going to blast right through the skydiving drop zone down here because we can because he's not ready to jump yet. The little shaking is just the front wheel spinning, and that's going to stop pretty soon. Now, how is this for one of the most spectacular mornings in Hawaii? Absolutely gorgeous. These are more like Arizona clouds. We get them, but I haven't uh, seen it this pretty in, in a while. That's a really great morning. So, think of this while we're flying as our steering wheel. And even if we let go, Danny, nothing bad will happen. We won't flip over, we won't stall, it just means nobody's steering. To go down, the easiest thing I can do is let up on the throttle and gravity will just pull us down. So I'll control up and down with the foot throttle. Yeah. If we want to go down quicker, we can, we can do a lot of work and pull the bar in, that's pitch. Okay. But we generally won't use it very much because it takes more muscle to fly this than any other aircraft in aviation. Because we're moving a 32 foot kite. Doing at Paradise 2, low pass, runway 8. Kind of fun, huh? Yeah, absolutely. A little power. Yeah. But see, we never didn't have a landing area. Look at the fields we got now. We're going to do a slow turn here. Now, do you notice it's warmer up here than it is on the ground? Yeah. A lot of people don't realize this about planet Earth, but the ground, Mother Nature, the Earth itself, gives up and absorbs heat very easily. So overnight, when the sun goes down, the land gets really cold. And as the land gets really, really cold, the air right above it gets chilled like it's a refrigerator coil. So we flew out of that cold air into the air that the sun's already starting to warm up. Now you can see, um, to our right, the swells that are starting to come in. It's gonna be this kind of a glassy day. We're not gonna have strong trade winds today. It's gonna to make it nice for the surfers at places like Pipeline. So they won't have to fight a real strong uh, trade wind blowing in their face like at Sunset Beach, but it's real, real glassy. You can yeah. see a little bit of wind offshore. And the surf looks respectable right now. It's hard to tell from the air, but I'll bet you those waves are already about six to eight foot on the sets, probably more. Now back to the steering of this, when we're, when we're going where we want to go, there's nothing to do. I'm just enjoying the view. And in a car, if you wanted to do a right turn, you would turn your steering wheel, all right? Yeah. Instead of turning our steering wheel in a circle, we turn it side to side. So to go to the right, we just pull our weight to the right. It's like leaning on your surfboard. This is a far more bird-like aircraft than any other aircraft because you're connected to the wing like you connected to a surfboard or a snowboarder is connected to the snowboard. No other aircraft in aviation does the pilot get to move the wing directly. So to me, this is why I like these and why I don't know how to fly our airplane. I find our airplane to be very, very boring. That's a little easier to steer in the front seat, but you'll get a good taste from the back. But to do a right turn, you don't pull it towards you or away from you, you pull it towards me like that. That's a right turn. And I'm gonna come around here and we are gonna get the most beautiful sunrise photo. 
Now, all the other companies except my buddy on Maui, who I set up his photography and mine, they usually use a GoPro out on the both wings. The GoPro doesn't get any audio generally. Our video is going to get that, so just know we do get all the audio. But the stills are on a timer. You don't know when to look at the camera. I got a little switch here, so take a look at the camera. We're going to get a great one. Yeah, that's perfect. This is, we'll do one more. Absolutely magic light, huh? Yeah, beautiful. Now, when you get a hang glider in a turn, Danny, it will just stay in the turn. So there's a lot of work involved to start and stop the turn, and then you just enjoy the view and leave it in the turn. Even if there's cold air draining off the mountain, which is called a catabatic wind, it'll put little ripples. The kite will just move a little bit, but it'll still stay in the turn. You can also push your weight back to the center. You don't have to pull. You can pull or push or do both. How you like it so far? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Now, it's unfortunate, but I'll, I'll bet even your wife might actually be able to enjoy something like this because the zip line, to me, is more intimidating than just cruising around when you've got a seat belt on. But, you know, for some people, altitude is just not their deal. Um, it, it's kind of ironic, but this is actually the safest place in the world is the sky because there's less human beings. So we just kind of let the bar float. We don't pull in or out. So you just have a really relaxed grip where it's just floating. You can always let go like that and you'll see where it floats, okay? Yep, that's neutral. That's as far as moving our weight forwards and backwards. Most people think that you have to raise the nose of an aircraft to go up and that's completely wrong. If you drive enough air over the airfoil, it will create lift. And that's the easiest way in a powered hand glider to go up is for me to step on the throttle. If you want to go up quicker, you can raise the nose in this aircraft by pushing your weight towards the tail. It's like stepping on your tail on a surfboard. Sure. All right, but if we don't add power, the forward speed will burn out and we'll get pulled back down. So what I'm teaching you here is you cannot go up just by raising the nose. If you raise the nose, you've got to add even more power because sure. you're going up a steeper that hill. So if you pitch the nose up or down, you've got to either add or reduce power to do it properly, right? Look at the Mount Kaala. You're probably aware that that's the highest volcano on your island. Yeah. Well, you were born, you were raised on Kauai, but that's, that's our highest volcano, 4,020 feet. So uh, let's get a nice photo. I'll get it in the background. Give me another shaka. Nice. So you get her laid into a turn, she's just gonna stay in a turn. We're gonna go out to the western tip. Have you ever been out to Kaina Point? Because you can walk out there. No. All right. So a little history, 1947, a tsunami that did quite a bit of damage on uh, Hilo, uh, took out the train track and the road that went around to the west side. So there's an old bumpy road out here where surfers could come back and forth and anybody really wanted to come around, but I understand it was a pretty bumpy road. Anyway, the tsunami took it out on the west side, right around the corner. So people could still drive out to the point from this side, and they did that. And it was unfortunate because a lot of them damaged the, the nesting area for the albatross birds, the monk seals hang out out there. So they were just being stupid humans, and it was causing a lot of trouble for those two species, and they're both on the endangered species list. So they put up a rock wall, and this is now a park. The park starts just from beyond the YMCA here. Um, kind of about the end of the road probably is where it starts, but I think there's actually a sign a little closer back in here. So this is all a park to protect the nesting area for the albatross. So they've got it all fenced in out there so the birds can fly in and out, and squirrels and rodents and, uh, you know, like mongoose and uh, wild pigs and dogs can't get in there. So the, the birds are doing really good. So it's a really a, a nice success story. And the monk seals, they come up. I don't know how they get it up because it's so rocky out there. But the monk seals and the albatross are really enjoying kind of point. And you can walk out from either side. You'll see some cars down there. You gotta get a permit from the Department of Land and Natural Resources. And then they give you a code to the gate. And then if they ever find you down there, you gotta have a permit or you'll get a pretty big fine, I think. Now we're gonna have a spectacular view. That's that's about as pretty as Kauai over there, that mountain range, because it's got all the uh, erosion going on. So it's 12 to 16 degrees colder up there on the point, up there on Mount Kaala, yeah. because it's 4,000. Jump is five minutes over Dillingham, Mount Bravo Whiskey, one four thousand. It's 4,020 feet high. For every thousand feet you go up in the air, it's usually three to four degrees colder. 
So that's why it's um, 12 to 16 degrees colder there. Now, did you did you know that that's a rainforest, that whole ridge? You'll probably guess because of the yeah. erosion. So it's a rainforest because it can literally take the trade winds and direct them upward and chill the moisture into a cloud and make it rain. So that's a rain manufacturing plant in front of us. Rain's up there two to 300 inches a year because it can chill the moisture. The reason why there's no clouds right on it today is there's no wind. These are just some uh, nice high clouds that we're gonna go up on top of in a little bit. Look at the rain shower over here to our left. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? And you can actually see the wind coming out and hitting the water too. Yeah. And those boats out there, I, I, I usually don't see them that close. That's not the shark activity boats. They're too close in. And I don't think that they're too far out for being towing surfers. Maybe they're just fishing. So when we're in a turn, pilots call this roll. Same thing in a Cessna, like you were, you were flying when you were younger. So we're gonna roll back out of a left turn and roll our wings level. That's the axis from nose to tail. Again, it's easier when you're in the front seat. If you were trying to get your license, you would not be in the back seat on your second flight. You'd be up here and your instructor would be in the back because we have all the controls that we need back there too. And, um, and you, you could learn it. Um, now, you're in Atlanta, Georgia, right? Yeah. How far is Savannah, Georgia? Uh, I have gone down there and talked. I was going to go flying one morning with uh, Mr. Baker. I can't remember his name. Your wife, your wife put me in touch with him. Oh, D Dave Myers. Dave Myers, that's it. Yeah, yeah he's a great guy. He did a, an innocent flight like you one day. His son was in the military and about to get deployed to Afghanistan. So his dad came over here and they both went flying, one with Denise and one with me. And he called us up a couple weeks later and said, you know, carpentry's not that busy in Georgia right now. What would it take for me to do what you're doing? And uh, so we, we mentored him and coached him for a couple of years. And uh, I think he ended up doing a few flights with us and then we got him hooked up with a mainland instructor. And uh, he's been running a business now for probably about four or five years. Nice. Maybe maybe even six, seven years. He's been doing it. So he changed his whole career after just doing one recreational flight to go do something with his son. Now you can see Yokohama Bay. So are you familiar at all with the west side of our island? No. Okay, so normally that is the side of the island you want to go to if you want smooth water. Because all of our wind usually comes out of the east and the west side is protected from the wind. You can actually drive to that beach right there. That's Yokohama Bay. You can drive right to Yokohama Bay coming up the west side, but you can't drive around the point from either direction. And that's why that beach is very, very empty. That is my second favorite beach. My favorite beach is the one that's just starting to show up over there because it doesn't have bathrooms and showers and drinking water and a parking lot. And it's not at the end of the road. It doesn't have a lifeguard. A lot of people come to the end of the road just because that's the end of the road. Yeah. They don't realize that they just drove by a prettier beach that's kind of hidden because there's a lot of bushes over there. But you can see that beach over there. That other beach is called Makua. That's Makua Beach and that's Makua Valley. And you can park at either end and you can walk into that beach. Now when you come around the point over there, that's Makaha, the surfing break. Makaha is right around the corner. So when you come north of Makaha, that's where civilization ends. Look. I always joke, but there's no houses, there's no hotels, and there's no Taco Bells, okay? From Kayana Point to Makaha. 99.9% .9 of our visitors never come here. They go to Hanama Bay so they can snorkel with 4,000 people. It's, rid it's ridiculous. You can see some wind texture out here, and we are 86 miles away from your home where you grew up. Kauai is right out there, very hard to see. I've seen it about 10 times. But usually there's some clouds or some moisture where you can't see it, but Kauai is straight. So oh, Kauai is right about that direction, about an hour and 15 minute flight in this. And th these aircraft are safe to go inner island. Wow. Now look at the water over here on your left. Look at the deep blue. You can imagine what it's going to be like when the sun clears those clouds. Beautiful. It's spectacular, isn't it? Your video is looking down there right now. It is whale season too, so if you see any spouting off, let me know. Jump over one minute, turn above with you, one four thousand. So you can walk out from either side, but look how rug, rug, rugged the beaches are. They're not that great, but those two beaches are phenomenal. Yeah, they're beautiful. And you can see the entire west coast right now. Beautiful paved road driving right up it. And look at those mountains right there. We have some of the prettiest lighting I've ever seen. Yeah. Very cold, so we're going to drop down pretty soon, but 
pretty spectacular up here, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. That's now, what, one of the reasons we're up high right here, the main reason, is there's no place down there that I'm willing to try to pull off an emergency landing. And I'll uh, give you an example of uh, how stupid pilots in general can be. The majority of them, I would say almost all of them, fly around this point for some reason at a thousand feet. That's not high enough to glide to a good landing area, in my opinion. Yeah. All right, we're at 4,000 feet, and we can glide seven feet forward for every foot of altitude we are above the ground if we're not fighting any headwind. So that's 28,000 feet. It's over five miles. Let's jump the way, none of our From Kayana Point, that beautiful point there, uh -huh. to the center of the runway is two and a half. Really? Yeah, and you don't even have to get to the center of the runway. It's a 9,000 foot runway. So how much? How much room do you need to land? Uh, it depends on how scared you are and what the surface is. Okay. You could probably stop at about 75 feet in the sand on that beach. Wow. Give me a smile right here. Lighting's not great, but we'll try to get a good photo and see how it works out. <laughs> now, I'm going to sh show you something, and you got to use your imagination a little bit, but you know, you know what the trade winds are, right? Yeah. So the trade winds are caused by the spinning of the earth, and that's hopefully not going to stop anytime soon. 95% of our days we have trade winds. Yeah. By 11 o'clock in the morning, the water on the right side over here is completely choppy with a, a wind that's blowing parallel with the water. Uh -huh. It just chops it up, chops it up, chops it up, chops it up. It's not gonna happen for a week, but usually the water over here is miserable, in my opinion, for any water activity. It's just full on white caps because the wind is blowing parallel with the water and chopping it up. Then it hits this mountain or the uh, uh, volcano over there tumbles across the sky and then crashes offshore, it doesn't affect the water. So a normal scenario is to be up here for me and we'll jump the way, not above with you on the descent. at 11 o'clock and see really choppy water that only a kite surfer, a wind surfer, and a sailor would like, yeah. okay? And over here, it looks like a lake all year. Most of our swells can't make the corner and come in here. That's why Makaha almost never has any waves. It gets some waves if we get a southwest or a northwest swell. But if there isn't any west in it, there's no waves here. So in addition, just imagine this contrast. Flat as could be, winter day, yeah. no wind, drier, warmer, and less crowded. It'll look just like that. Perfect place. Yep, and over here, choppy water and 20-foot surf. But it can't get around the corner. Yeah. So it's exact opposite characteristics. I just want you to know that if you have time on this trip or any other trip, you should come up the west side. We're gonna give you a little card that we put together. There's only about five things on the west side that are like a must do. Uh -huh. And uh, they'll be on a list for you so you'll have those. Now, go ahead and pull your left hand towards my face. Yeah, don't worry about going too far, you won't. That's the turn. See how easy that is? Yeah. That's all there is to it. That's a turn. Nice. Now once you get it in the turn, just let it, you know, you don't have to use any muscle. It's gonna stay in the turn. This, the sail is so aerodynamic, it changes shape. Now pull your right hand towards my face. Yep. And just so you know, you can do this. Okay. You can really crank it. Nothing bad happens. All it does is steer. Nice. All right, now take your right hand and flip it over and put it on the inside, right next to mine. Now push the bar away from you. That moves your weight too. So it doesn't matter if you're pushing or pulling. Hey, Lob, should be no factor, but I'm uh, out by the end of the road, 2,500. So enjoy this view. Okay, I'm turning on my face here at the end of the road. I'm looking for you. I'm still at 5,000. You got TCAS today? Yes, I do. Okay, I'll turn on my transponder for you. So I got you inside, thanks. You can see the parachutes coming down right there? Yeah. So he has a piece of equipment that we started to touch on before we got I'll do it right there in 360. So there's a plane that's going to come around us and come in and land. So we're talking to him right now. Oh, it's behind us? Yeah. There he is right there. Look at him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Bob. We got you in sight. What time do they go up? Uh, usually at 7. They were a little late today. There's three companies, but they're the ones that go early. Now, again, back to these, uh, there's no good landing area, so when you come around the corner at 1,000 feet, you don't have a good alternate plan, uh -huh. all right? 
and you don't have as good a view as we just had. It doesn't make any sense at all. Usually when people are stupid... They're Usually when people are stupid, there's a reason. But there's no reason to be at a thousand feet out there. You're really risking your life and you don't have as good a view as you and I just had from 4,000 feet. Now feel how there's a little texture in the air right now? Just not, not much, but the kite moves around a little bit. All right, so what's going on there is that the cold air up there is heavier and it's draining down the mountain. And that's called a catabatic wind. And that's why you can get away with surfing a little bit in the morning here from Holly Eva to Kaina Point. We have an offshore wind that is not the trade winds. It's wind draining off of the land. It's called the land breeze. And those land breezes will create an offshore wind to make the surf better. But as soon as the trade wind com comes in, all bets are off. Nobody in their right mind would surf with an onshore wind, except a kite surfer and a wind surfer. Traditional surfing, it yeah. just disorganizes the waves, the water's real bumpy, there's no barrels, so it, uh, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. Well, he came in quick. Yeah, he did. That's his job, to go up and down like an elevator. He's gonna pick those people up, he'll be taken off within probably four minutes. He'll How be, many uh, does he take up at a time? Uh, that plane can hold about 20. That's a, oh, really? That's yeah. a, Two, two million dollar aircraft with the biggest engine in the world and uh, Pacific Skydiving does a really really good job on their first jumps and uh, Oahu Parachute Center will jump even till sunset which is really nice and then Skydive Hawaii over the years they put out well, I don't know hundreds of thousands of people they have had the only two student fatalities but most days it even goes well at their company but uh, we don't recommend them because they used to lie about their altitude I don't know if they still do now but uh, they used to be pretty Morally bankrupt. <laughs> Give me a smile right here. Now, you feel how quiet it is right now? Yeah, okay. the air's warm. Yep. It's 12 to 16 degrees colder up there, and we were up there. We were as high as that. That's why it rains up there, is the coldness. That's why you don't get fog down here. This is not fog at all. This is salt spray and maybe volcanic ash from the Big Island, which you know of as fog. Now I'm going to add power, but we've been gliding since we were way out there. I just took my foot off the throttle, uh -huh. and uh, we did a bunch of turns, and we still made it to the airport. So when we were flying out there, there was zero danger to you or I, even if we ran out of fuel, or our fuel filter got clogged, or any kind of a mechanical problem, because our backup power source cannot break. Nobody seems to ever get this question. It's one of the reasons why people like your wife and most of the planet are scared of the sky. They don't understand it. But when we were gliding from kind of point back to here in the last five minutes, I was not using the Rotax engine that I'm using now. I put my foot back on the throttle because I don't want to descend because our landing area is over there in the airport, not here. So if I get low here and I have a problem, I can't make it to the airport. So we're being nice to the neighbors, we're flying offshore, and we're at an altitude that I always have a landing area. It's one of the reasons why my flying job is safer than uh, just about any flying job in the world. I would I would bet to say it is safer than any in the world with at my experience level now because the trickiness of the aircraft I can master. But um, I get to pick where we go. Bob Whiskey, the body number 826. And I'm always going to make sure there's a landing area nearby. Well, right. They're already taking off. They're already taking off. They'll be doing that all morning long. And some days he does 22 flights. They're so busy that a lot of times when he needs gas, they'll pull out their other aircraft, which is exactly the same, and they'll do that with another pilot while he takes a break, goes to the bathroom, eats a sandwich, and they fuel the aircraft, and then he'll take more. Give me a smile right here at Dillingham. These are gonna be gorgeous photos. So anyway, our backup power source, I wanna, I wanna run this by because it's the best lesson that I can give somebody about the sky. Our backup power source is not the Rotax engine that you can hear. You can see this, the parachute's coming down right now. We were gliding, and we were gliding on gravity. Gravity is our backup power source, and it cannot fail. This is the only activity that I do, and the only one that I can think of, where your backup can never fail you. See that wave breaking right there? That's called Devil's Rock. Real shallow spot, and there's a river that comes out here from the, by the polo field and the naked beach, which is on the point. There's a river right in the middle. The wave breaks right down the coral reef on the right side of the river. It's one of the best breaking lefts in the world. It's as good as Uluwatu, but it breaks right there on the rock and it'll peel all the way down like this. You see the wind is offshore right now? And you know that land breeze is made by the cold air coming off the top. 
Now pull your right hand towards my face because we're going to go out over the fields now. Nice. Now level the wing by bringing your left hand towards my face. There you go. Give me another smile. Give me that shock off with your left hand. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Now let's go out to the flat fields over there to our left. So just pull the left hand towards my face. You're, you're doing roll. And then it's just to finish up on our backup engine. If our engine were to quit right now, our backup engine's gravity. Yeah. And I'm flying high enough that I don't land in the palm trees. I land in the empty field. Nice. So that's all you do when you're flying around in this thing is think where, where, where would I land right now and make it easy. So um, this activity is so much safer than driving out here. If you are uh, got somebody texting coming into your lane, what's your magic plan B? Yeah, you know, it. Airbags are going off and you're going to see how you come out. It's Russian roulette. But up here, we've got two powered hang gliders and a skydiving plane flying around. And I get to pick where I fly. And I've been doing a powered hang gliding for 16 years and uh, traditional hang gliding for 40 years. So uh, this isn't my first rodeo, all right? But you still want to fly um, smart. And even though I fly conservative on a safety measure, you're not bored, are you? No, no. And I'm not bored either, but we don't we don't have to be in the bottom of a canyon risking our lives to make it fun and exciting. But yeah. there are people that will try to loop these aircraft, and it says in the operating limitation, they're not aerobatic. But people will try to do things that are just stupid. But, and, and like I said, you you work in the law, law profession, and you find out generally when people mess up, they had something to do with it. <laughs> Give me a smile. Nice. Now I'll be your power steering. I'm just going to push this back to level. Over 90%, probably closer to 95% of what we do with the wing is roll. Yeah. Our weight's either in the center, the right, or the left because that's how we steer. Now I have a real favorite little field over here. It's got a couple bales. It looks like bales of hay right there. See those dots in that green field? Yeah. Now you and I don't own any of this property out here, but we get to use it better than the owners long as we don't touch. It's kind of interesting, but most aircraft have to remain 500 feet away from people and property in this airspace. Uh -huh. A powered parachute, a powered hang glider, and a gyro, because they're pretty slow aircraft, they want to be able to let you fly low. We have no minimum altitude at all. We can fly as low as we want in these fields because this is called Class G and it's uncontrolled airspace, and it's uncongested. We're not flying over a city. If we're going over a city, we gotta be like a thousand feet, yeah. all right? But if we're cruising through here, we don't have to be at anything as long as we don't touch. Look at that, lucky houses up there on that hill. Nice. It's actually a monastery, and then a bunch of private homes here, and then two other homes, and that's all that's up there. Give me a smile right here. These would be absolutely gorgeous photos. Nice. I'm gonna pull in, so we dive down a little bit. Kind of fun, isn't it? Oh, really? Yeah. All right, another smile. There's some workers over here on the left. We'll buzz up because we're running out of runway. So I got to come up over here. Oh, they're, I don't know if they're picking or planting, but it looks like a big leafy thing. Like yeah, taro's got more uh, water around it. I think taro they grow a lot like rice, don't they? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think that was more big leafy green. I don't know. Uh, it didn't look like, like cauliflower or anything. It looked like really big leafy lettuce stuff. So, nice way to fly. Yeah, oh, wonderful. So let me tell you a little bit about this volcano. and Give me a smile. I'll get a picture of it in the background. So it's 4,020 feet tall. It rains two to 300 inches a year. If a place rains 100 inches a year or more, they call it a rainforest. So it's easily a rainforest. There's a house right there. Look at that house. What a beautiful place to live. And there's a little house tucked away over there. Oh, nice. And then there's all these houses over there. They can go to bed at night and never, ever, ever, ever worry about that volcano erupting. Do you know why? All of the Hawaiian Islands, including Kauai, where you grew up, move towards the northwest as much as your fingernail grows in a year, that's how much they move in a year, which is not very much. 
But if you move that little for a hundred billion years or however long they've been moving, it's a few hundred miles evidently. Yeah. This island used to be where the big island is. So did Kauai. That's why Kauai's canyons are deeper than the canyons here. It's older. Kauai was made and then moved off the hotspot. Uh -huh. And then we were made and moved off the hotspot. And then Molokai was made and moved off the hotspot. So that's how it works. Wow. The volcanoes are not at the hot spot. So these people, they're not gonna get a discount on that property because that is never gonna erupt. Nice. You get all the beauty of a volcano, which also creates fresh water. And look how beautiful that place is to live with no danger. Gorgeous. Giant ham traffic, Paradise 2 is clear to the east. So, we're not next to Dillingham, so I switched to another radio frequency, which is the frequency that we would go on if we're not next to an airport. So if we hear any radio calls, they could be from anywhere on Oahu. Each island has their own unique frequency because radio waves do pretty good over water. And you have a Waimea Valley on Kauai, right? Yeah. But we have a Waimea Valley here, so if we didn't have the same we had the same radio frequencies for the, each of the islands, it could get very confusing. So um, each island has a different radio frequency, which is the frequency when you're not near an airport, we go to this. Have you ever visited the sugar mill over there? Uh, is that, where is that? That's the Waialua sugar mill. I don't think I have. I would highly recommend it. It's on our list of things to do on the North Shore. The cone-shaped building, they make incredible soaps and lotions. They give you a free tour in there. Look at the rainbow up above. Rainbow. Yeah. Also over there is a big uh, warehouse just chock full of things. They sell chocolate that's grown in these fields. It's the only chocolate grown in America is sold over there at the sugar mill. Uh, they also give free coffee samples, all kinds of different coffee. So I highly recommend you consider going over to the sugar mill. All right, look what we got now for the playground. What a beautiful place to fly. What do you think? Uh, wonderful. Where's Laiea from here? Is just about straight ahead, maybe okay. a tiny bit to the right, but uh, just kind of like right over over there. Because okay. uh, this would be the famous North Shore going up to Turtle Bay. Yeah. Then you got Kahuku and uh, Laiea is right, right over in there. Okay. So now we're going to go play in the pineapple fields. Look at these canyons down here. Now you never fly down in the bottom of this canyon. Do you know why? Why's that? What would you guess? The wind's coming up? That's the most common wrong answer. It could be uh, a factor if there was wind. The wind that you're feeling right now is created by our flying motorcycle. So it's as calm down there in that canyon as it is up here, all right? Okay. But there's no landing area. What if you have a problem? I guess so. Uh, That's Russian roulette down there. Yeah. You could easily die if you had an emergency down there. And up here, it's easy to have just a good story. Yeah. Oh, it's a pretty easy decision. Now this is a beautiful photo I've taken. I'll get pineapple and this neighborhood and the volcano if you look at the camera on the left wing. And it'll even have that canyon in it. Yeah, perfect. So look how rugged it is down there. Yeah. And you'd be landing at least 40, 40 to 50 miles an hour. It'd be like just crashing in there with a motorcycle. Um, it, it's not something that people give much thought to. But I can understand someone like your wife being nervous about this if you look at the fact that there's no protection in even a Cessna 150. Yeah. You might think there is, but a thin sheet of aluminum here with a window doesn't protect you. Yeah. Nobody even mentions that we don't have airbags in airplanes. Why not? Because it's heavy and they're expensive. Yeah. So um, um, military aircraft are built strong enough to maybe survive a crash, not civilian aircraft. So I just, I'm not willing to fly where I could crash because I, I would be much happier crashing in my avalanche truck with airbags and yeah. uh, you know a lot of metal around me than I would in this. Look at the guys waving at us. All right, so sometimes you kind of got to block the sun, but I like going down this one particular road so it happens to be fairly lined up with the sun. Uh -huh. But uh, the old pineapple, a lot of people mistakenly think that we don't grow pineapple here anymore, and Dole is huge. Yeah. Del Monte used to be over there in those foothills, uh -huh. but they don't have a gift shop that's making $20 million a year. There's a <laughs> gift shop over here that's based on pineapple. Yeah. You know, they sell pineapple ice cream and pineapple, you name it, and macadamians and chocolates and 
you know, hamburgers and all that. So they got this whole tourist thing going over there. And this is zone agricultural, so they they have a hard time putting houses here anyway. If they can break even on the pineapple and make money on their gift shop, it's a worthwhile inv adventure. Yeah. So there's some pineapple in these next fields. Those are pineapple. You can actually smell them lots of times when I'm right in here this week. And you can also smell the fertilizer that's made over in those fields over there. Give me a smile right here. Another shaka? Cool. You can see the little pineapple plants, right? Yeah. My mother worked at the Dole Cannery. Oh. Uh, cutting up pineapples by hand when she was growing up. Wow. Now how nice is this for flying? Oh, it's so we're in a slow left turn. That's roll. That's the axis from nose to tail. It's the same in a Cessna. Same in a 777. You draw a line from the nose to the tail and you rotate on it, it's roll. It's one of the three axes of control in an airplane. We only have two. We have roll and we can pitch the nose up and down. Roll is from nose to tail. Pitch is from wingtip to wingtip. We can pitch the nose up or we can pitch the nose down. So about how That's it. high are we off the ground now? Uh, about 100 feet. 100 feet. Yep. And one of the reasons I know is this uh, middle of uh, Oahu out here is about 800 feet above sea level, and we're at 930 feet above sea level. With a GPS or some other way, I could know exactly what we are, but I know that uh, this is about 800 feet above sea level, and I just did a little quick math. These guys are picking pineapple, and they like to wave at us when we go by. It's still, That's, still done manually, huh? It's still done by hand. They plant them by hand and they pick them by hand. So you might know this, but when they plant a pineapple plant, how long does it take for the first pineapple to grow? I cannot remember. Two years. Two years. And then they pick it and it takes another year to get another one. And look, they're picking pineapple. I don't know that they're picking them because these don't look that ripe. Yeah. They don't look that big, but they're working the right there. They are picking them. Yeah, they're they going right into, the, right into the truck. Smile. So the other kid's at 6,000 feet. He takes off, does his whole flight up at a real high and boring 6,000 feet. Because down here, you got to be a better pilot if you have an emergency. You got to be able to land right away. Yeah. Right? Up there, you could probably have more choices. But I got all the choices I need. Pineapple field. Yeah. It'll work. All right. So now we're going to cross the road. So let's say we want to climb quick. We push our weight towards the tail. The tail comes down. That brings the nose up. Step on the throttle, level the wing. So we're holding the bar. I'm gonna let go, you hold it there. What you're doing is pushing a little weight towards the tail, like stepping on the tail of your surfboard will yeah. raise up the nose. You know, when you go up so the wave goes faster and you can get in the barrel, you put a little weight on the tail. So we got a little weight on the tail right now. It's holding the tail uh, down and the nose up. And that way we climb quicker. If you don't wanna climb that quick, you just leave pitch alone and just do it with power. So we can climb with power and we can climb with power and pitch. Yeah, that but you sense. cannot climb with just pitch. And a lot of people don't understand that. Now here's another very, very dangerous canyon to fly down in. If you look on YouTube, you'll find people doing stuff like that. And it usually works out fine. Because what's the chances? I got 16 years, we've been running two or three aircraft daily and we've never had an engine failure. So it's probably not gonna happen. Uh -huh. It's not good enough. No. <laughs> I mean, look at that area. You're crashing into trees at 50 miles an hour. It's, no. it's, it's funny, I got 8,000 skydives, a little more than that, and I'm a professional skydiver, and I've made my living filming high-end skydiving, and people think that I'm a daredevil. I say, no, I'm very, very aware of the dangers, and I minimize them to the point that up here is far safer than what happens on the ground, because I can't minimize the idiot coming at me. That's just Russian roulette. Yeah. Are they texting? Did they drop their hot dog and they're reaching down to pick it up in their car? You know, that's all it takes for them to kill you. How, how's this for some property? Wow. Give me a smile. Nice. Now I'm gonna level the wing out. How big a ranch is this? It's not real huge, to be quite honest. 
Um, but there's you know a few head of cattle. It's not like Parker Ranch on the on the Big Island is is really big. But you notice that we're not in the field where the cattle are. We could be, but I could scare cattle into a barbed wire fence. We would be or I would be responsible. Yeah. So this rancher could not stop me from doing what I'm doing right now because this is Class G uncontrolled, uncongested airspace, and in my aircraft with my license, and this being registered with the FAA, we own the sky, he doesn't. I can't touch his property unless it's an emergency. If it was an emergency and we landed down there, he couldn't do anything about that either. But you can't just go land. Yeah. Give me another smile there, Danny. Nice. We're about two, two thirds of the way through our flight. You having a good time? Oh, wonderful. Nice. And we got some cattle in front of us, right? Yeah. So pull your left hand towards my face. We're gonna do a left turn. We're gonna cut across here. I'm gonna pinch the nose up, stay above these birds. So one of my more common jobs with skydiving now is shooting for Hawaii 5 And I've actually gotten to land my parachute on this property three times right here in this field wow. for an episode where I filmed jumpers coming out of a C-17. They were actually real, real military jumpers that I got to jump with. And I filmed the accident in free fall and then we landed here and they filmed the landings. And uh, I had to just land behind the cameraman because my, my parachute is a rainbow parachute, not a military one. Now see this little house over here? Uh -huh. This is my friend, he's a retired Hawaiian Airlines pilot. He's got one of the most beautiful, peaceful properties in the world. I swear he's a Tennessee moonshiner. And generally his he's wife- waving. What? He's waving. Oh yeah, that's his wife, she comes out and waves. <laughs> I think that's the hubby today. Nice. Pretty funny, isn't it? Give me a smile over his place. <laughs> All right. That is, uh, looks very peaceful there. It sure does. Now let's level the wing out by bringing your left hand towards my face and I'll push with the right. So we use roll throughout the whole flight. Because think about it, when you're driving your car, it's not 100% of the time, but most of the time you're doing something with your steering wheel, right? Yeah. Same thing here. Most of the time we're doing something with our steering wheel. And take in the big view of the North Shore. So many people think of uh, Oahu as not being as pretty as Kauai. Look at that. Mount Kaua is one of the most beautiful mountains in all of the Hawaiian Islands. When we went out to the tip out there, I didn't mention it. That's a desert. Yeah. Rains less than 20 inches a year on the whole west side, including the tip. Because it's too low to make rain the way most of our rain is made. Probably 90% of our rain certainly at least 80 is made in the spinning of the earth, creating wind that comes in here, hits a tall mountain, goes up, chills into a cloud, makes it rain. Yeah. But it's not cold enough out there. So it rains 20 inches a year there and 300 there. That's amazing. Yep. Now, the reason we're not going to the right, what do you guess? The windmills there. Yeah, they're not even turning though, but that's a good thing to, to consider. What do you think of our landing areas? There's none. None, okay. Let's go a little bit more to the right. We got time to check a little bit of the North Shore. I don't know if we'll get up to pipeline or anything. The surface is supposed to get bigger. I don't think it's gotten out of control entertainingly big yet. Now, if we fly this direction, we got landing areas galore. Yeah. There you go. Is that what is that over there? Unfortunately, that is solar panels, uh, and we don't even like the windmills. And I'm really a clean energy kind of guy, but they could have put them way up on the ridge. Instead, they put them so close to Waimea Valley, you can see and hear them. Now we're in a left turn, I wanna go out to the water, so there you go. Look at the pineapple fields. There you go. See how slow this thing responds? Yeah. Now level it back out. No need to go in and out, that's pitch. Side to side only. That makes it easier for you because you can forget about in and out. If you're pushing the bar out here and you don't have the throttle, it's not doing yeah. anything. If you're pulling in and I have the throttle on, we're fighting each other. So you can ignore pitch unless you have the throttle. Look at this canyon. Now this is our prettiest and deepest canyon on Oahu. It's nothing like your Waimea on, the, on Kauai. Yeah. Let's do a slow 360. I'll add a little power so we don't descend. Well, check it out. Very pretty canyon. But it's not as big and dramatic as your canyon because your canyon is millions of years older. Yeah. It goes all the way up to our peak. That's a rainforest, two to three hundred inches a year. Many rivers funneling down to one. 
and I never fly down in the canyon. Give me a smile, this would be very pretty. Nice. Excellent. So that's right roll, level the wing back out. Excellent. And again, it's probably at least five times easier up here because these bars are right next to my shoulders. Yeah. This is also the fastest, most modern powered hang glider wing in the world, and it really wants to go fast. Because uh -huh. we live in Hawaii, we wanted a really fast one. I've had to land in 28 mile an hour winds, and wow. some hang gliders, you just wouldn't even penetrate much more than that, okay? Now, so, when I came last time, we had to cancel because of the winds. What were they probably doing? Well, see the mountain over there? Yeah. It's just I thought you said they were blowing into the mountain or something. Well, they were probably coming over the mountain. Now, you know, we don't have south winds very often. But if the wind comes out of the south, it will hit that mountain on the other side. It will get pushed up, and it crashes over this side like water swirling down a river going around a rock. Okay. You ever seen water coming towards a rock? It's smooth. Yeah. And then on the back side is an eddy where kayakers can get caught, right? Sure. Turbulent horizontal rotating water because it, it hit an obstacle. We get turbulent vertically crashing. It's like a, a wave of air crashing down on Dillingham Airfield. So you can't safely take off and land because you're gonna be fighting the wind. You have a 32 foot kite and you have no pulleys and no hydraulics. It's all muscle. Yeah. There is not a control surface in aviation. In anywhere in the world, it takes more muscle to fly than a powered hang glider. And this is probably the worst, because it's the fastest, all right? Yeah. So the last thing you want is Mother Nature crashing down over a mountain on you. So I would say 10 miles an hour coming over the mountain is unacceptable, and 28 coming straight down the runway is a piece of cake. So it's wow. wind direction and wind velocity. Now, if it started blowing above 22, I won't deliberately take off, no matter how nice the direction is. Yeah. But wind direction and velocity. And it's all very easy to figure out. There's so much good information. We pay, um, I can pull right up on my phone. I know what the wind direction and the speed. I can hit graph and it'll show me the graph for the last three days. Let's go a little bit to the right just to be nice. Nope, don't go in and out, just go sideways. There you go. So we're getting up here to Waimea. Oh, okay. I see the, uh, that's clock, the, the tower. Yep, that's the church steeple yeah. there. It's hard to tell how, how I guess you can probably tell how uh, high the waves are, right? Well, look at the surfer catching the wave right there. Yeah. And uh, it, he's pretty small to it. Those are overhead for sure. Also, I'm used to knowing how far out they break, um, but you can also learn a little bit by looking at YMA. YMA needs huge waves. That's why the eddy so very, very rarely runs, because the water is deeper. There's no chance, there's no coral in the middle because the river keeps the coral from growing. Yeah. So when the bay closes out, they have to be huge waves because it's really deep in the middle. But the coral reef, on the side where they surf is deeper than it is at Three Tables or Shark's Cove or Pipeline. So waves will start to break in Pipeline before they even start to break here. Okay. But you can start to see the inside wave there. That's called pinballs on the right-hand side, yeah. right near the rocks, because there's a lot of back and forth. They call that pinballs and YMA is outside. YMA is not breaking. So that's one thing that I can factor in, like how big the waves are. But it takes a lot for Waimea to break. It can be 20 foot surf in some of these other places before Waimea breaks. And look at these guys right here. Three guys out in a place, uh, uh, it's right near alligators. I don't know if that's marijuanas or alligators, but that wave that's breaking is at least eight to 10 foot high. Okay. And the wind's blowing offshore, it's perfect. You can see the coral reef right over there. Yeah. Now we're gonna get some light on us, take some pictures, and then we'll take a peek at Pipeline before we head out of here. That's three tables, Waimea, Waimea Valley. All right, give me a smile over Waimea. Now give me that shaka with your left hand. Nice. Beautiful. Now we're cruising at about 75 miles an hour and there's no wind in the sky. 
So we're going any direction we face is about 75 miles an hour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna level the wing out and we're gonna go over towards pipeline. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check. See how big that sandy beach is down there? Yeah. It's totally fine for a landing area. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Now, you gotta look out when the surf is good. I never go below 500 feet anymore. I used to fly really low on that beach, but now there's too many drones. And if I hit, oh, a, if I, right. if I hit a drone, it'll take us out of the sky. But we're at 1,500 feet right now, and uh, there's a whole lot going on at Pipeline. That's Pipeline crashing right there. There's a pile of rocks on this side. Uh -huh. That's actually rock piles, and Pipeline's further down. But that rock piles, you can pull right up. There's a break in the in the uh, houses there. You can pull right up at rock piles and watch those impressive waves. The pipeline, the best place to watch pipeline is way to the south side of Sunset Beach Elementary School. As soon as you get to Sunset Beach Elementary School, park and try to get over through the beach, the bike path onto the beach. You don't have to go up to the um, uh, Iukai Beach Park there. North Shore Wahoo traffic. Paradise 2 light sport aircraft, 1,500 feet wet, northbound at Bonsai Pipeline. So, I'm willing to fly here because if we had to land, I'm going to the beach. Yeah. So, how high do the drones get? Um, if they're trying to get any useful shots, they probably don't go any higher than 500 feet. Yeah. Now look at all the ho houses there. They're all worth $5 million. Yeah. Now that pack of guys, yeah, um, that's partly pipeline right in there. That's pipe. That's pipeline because it's just north of the elementary school. Yeah, it's almost impossible to see them. Back. Oh well, when yeah. we come around, you'll see them. So that's Sunset Beach up there. We used to own a house, six houses back, back in a distant time, long, long ago. We moved here 17 years ago, and we bought a house up there and got married. And that was going to be where we lived for the rest of our life, and then we couldn't take it here after about seven years because all of these houses are illegal rentals. And uh, That's it's right. noisy and the traffic, and it's just a, locals can't even afford the place. The place went from 440 to 880 We sold it for double what we bought it for. What is that though, with all the dishes? Uh, that's called COMSAT, Communication Satellites. Okay. All right, so this is the elementary school right here. And uh, that pack of guys right there. Now the waves are coming in a little disorganized, but they're 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 probably trying to surf back door and not pipeline today. It's coming in really this yeah. direction. So I don't think pipeline's breaking uh, clean enough. Boy, this guy with whatever he's got a jet ski or something just barely made it over that wave. All right, give me a smile at pipeline. <laughs> So look at the size of those things. They'd be entertaining to watch. Yeah. That guy's just got a big board over there. He's swimming around or something. But look at the look what he's got coming at him. That's a huge monster coming at that yeah. guy. And he looks like he's turning and trying to get it. He's gonna try to take that right. So those are 20 foot waves. That's huge. Man, that would have been gnarly. He did not catch it, and now he's got this one coming at him. How early do they get out here? Well, you know, the thing is, in California, we surf at sunrise because we need the cold air draining off the land to give us offshore winds. And as soon as the land heats up, the hot air rises, and it brings in air off the ocean and ruins the waves. That's where the term Dawn Patrol was developed, was we had to get in the water at sunrise. Um, here, they want the trade winds to pick up because that groups the waves even better, so they don't always get in the water early, but you can see guys are here. There'll be somebody in the water at dawn, but it gets better and better. Some days it's not even good until the trade winds pick up. This is a guy trying to catch a, looks like a boogie board there. That's a probably rocky point. What a view, huh? North Shore Wahoo traffic, Paradise 2 departing uh, Bonsai Pipeline, 1,000 feet for Holly Even. So you can see where waves will go across the road right there when it's really big, but you can pull right in where that big white vehicle is, and you can just watch these crashing down in here. That's called rock piles. 
Look at the houses up on the hill over there. Yeah. Evidently one of them was Elvis Presley's house. The one way over there that's just huge. Yep. Well, if I was going to live around here, I'd want to be on that ridge right there because you don't have to worry about climate change. The water's not going to go that high, but this is probably going to be all underwater one day. Yeah. It's not going to take much to take out the road and everything. So just kind of fly us towards Hollywood. If your arms aren't tired, if you want to take a break, you can take a break. But we're just going to fly this direction. a lot of information here. I got pages and pages and pages of stuff, uh -huh. but we actually put it, you can put in a little uh, micro USB card or SD card, whatever they are, uh -huh. and you can put in a, a custom program, which we did. So oh, this really? is, so this page was designed for, for what we wanted. There's pages of stuff I don't need. Uh, I really only care about engine information. What's the oil temperature and the exhaust gas temperatures and the RPMs and how much fuel and what's the battery. So I just use this rectangle right here, this vertical rectangle. Uh -huh. That's the only thing I like to have. I don't care if there was anything else. I don't need airspeed or anything. This air aircraft is so by feel that you can't stall it if you know what you're doing. Yeah. It's just not gonna happen. An airplane, you have to look at instruments to you know, know what's going on. Level the weight. So what's going to happen is the trade winds are coming from our left. That's what makes the surf good. They're going to keep picking up that left wing, and that keeps putting you in a right turn. So have you ever snowboarded or snow skied? Yeah. Well, you know when you're going across the hill, you kind of have to dig your edge in to hold your ski. Uh -huh. So I do the same thing here. I just put a little bit of weight on the on the side that keeps wanting to get picked up. You can either do it by pushing that way or pulling this way, but you just put a little bit of weight there, try to hold yourself level, and that'll keep you from having to keep correcting for turns. And now we're a little bit more left, so let's go a little bit to the right. There you go. Just bring it over and then level it back out. We're gonna go, we're gonna aim for those buildings over there. We're gonna cut the corner and go straight across there. surfing where the reef is and then somebody paddling out where it's deeper where the channel is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the water temperature this time of year? Oh, I'm guessing probably the low 70s. Yeah. This is a break called uh, Lonnie's. It's a good wave. Yep. It's the first one you can get to when you're driving from the South Shore, for one. And uh, there's a lot of b intermediate surfers there, so you don't feel intimidated like being at Bonsai Pipeline or Sunset, where it's uh, death defying. They're, they're really good waves, but they're not quite as deadly as uh, the more famous ones. Over there by those uh, tall apartment buildings is an area where there's a bunch of pyramid-shaped rocks that our military put there to keep the Japanese from unloading their two-man subs. And you can see how the waves come in and then they lose their energy and there's some calm water in front of the apartments. Yeah. So there's a really good snorkeling spot there where there's a big 30-foot across circle rock formation. Kind of weird, it almost looks man-made and it has a big rock or coral in the center. So it looks like a bullseye, but it's home to a lot of fish. It's on this card we'll give you. It's called the Veil Veil. And um, all week it's going to be good, particularly when there isn't any surf. It, the, when there's no wind and no surf, that water in there, it's so nice. There's no rip currents or anything, but the, the fish that live there will eat the algae off the turtles. So the turtles come over there, and so you got a lot of turtles and fish all in one area. It's called the Turtle Cleaning Station. See the guys surfing. This is a real good beginner break. If you want to get back into surfing, that's like a Waikiki wave. And I, I would recommend just so you get a surfboard and everything easily. There's a husband and wife team that we recommend called Amelia and Tamayo. 
and uh, they just show up right there with you. They usually get you out first thing in the morning, so you beat the other schools. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know when the last time you surfed is, but if you wanted to go surf with a big board and a nice Waikiki wave on the North Shore, I think you'd have a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd start off with a big board for sure. Yeah, and uh, Amelia, I'll get, I'll get you their card. You know, they just show up with a board for you, and she'll make sure you're in the right spot. Get you out there at sunrise is the best thing, just like you did with our flight. Don't have traffic, Paradise 2 is at uh, Cement City inbound for full stop. So you got cacao grown in the fields on either side of the river, sold as chocolate over there at the sugar mill. You've got the cone-shaped building as a soap factory is really cool. You got a turtle cleaning station right here. There's a, you can rent a kayak right in Holly Eva and go up the river and the, the rental place is right on the river so you don't have to transport it at all. Now we're going to try to go faster so I'm going to pull in the bar. Okay. And we're going to give up some altitude. If I didn't want to give up altitude, I could step on the throttle too. Uh -huh. and that would make up for this angle of attack. We would be creating more lift by the propeller pushing us forward. And uh, so you could make up for this descent if you wanted to. But we kind of, we're gonna land, so we need to give up our altitude eventually. So right over here, you can see the tall apartment building. Yeah. And you can kind of see some pointed rocks in there. To the right is a bunch of cute little A-frames. In those A-frames, the second one from the right, straight out there, you walk across that sandy water, and the minute the sandy water turns to coral is where the turtles are. So it's really close. It's right near that basketball court. Okay. So you just park right there. And uh, so the card we're going to give you, you don't need us uh, fins or a snorkel, but it's nice to have some kind of uh, eye, like a mask or you know swimming goggles. smile right here over the water. So Brian will be on the ground. She'll give you that card. She's going to give you a flight certificate. If you ever want to do this again, even on the mainland, just for fun or you want to get into it, uh, use me as a resource. You can always call me, okay? okay? That sounds good. There are places that I definitely would like to. Yep. And uh, that guy Dave Myers in Savannah, you know, evidently that's kind of a touristy spot. And uh, I think you'd enjoy his company. Uh, and he does it on floats on the Savannah River. Any places along the California coast? Yeah, there's a, a really good guy that does it that I wouldn't uh, recommend for advanced training, but there's a really good guy in San Diego yeah. that, that could do what we did where he, he'd go up and have fun, but he, he doesn't do a lot of advanced training. Uh, there's another guy in uh, the Hawthorne area, which is along LA, which doesn't sound very pretty, but they get to fly. They fly over uh, the, the beaches around Malibu and stuff, so it's pretty good. And uh, there's a really, really good guy up in Lake Tahoe. Oh, that's a beautiful area. The guy in Lake Tahoe is the guy we recommend for doing advanced training. So here come the... Yeah, now you can stay on the controls or you can just relax and watch my landing. But if you're on the controls, don't do anything. Let me do it. But this is a good time to just let go and just enjoy the view. Yeah, I love watching them. Now, if you want to watch more parachutes, when you leave our parking lot, do a left turn. And that'll bring you on the inside road, and there's three parachute centers here. Park and the big grass field at Pacific. And just walk over to the road. Yeah. Are you going to hold on, or? You... No, let's see. Okay. Give Rob, you still have a couple in the plane. Give me a smile. It's a rainbow. Yeah, I just got the last guys up. We'll jump to the way, not above with the on the defense. Rainbow behind us. But uh, you can park right there at Pacific Skydiving, and then just stand by the road. There's a, like a waist-high fence. It's really nice. Dillingham Traffic, Paradise 2, entering at the beach park for uh, 26. Pretty fun, huh? Oh, wonderful. So glad I did the hour. Since the wind is really calm, I can land either direction I want. Oh, really? 26 is the compass heading. West is 270. So this runway faces 10 degrees to the left of west or the south of west. Uh -huh. If you're going the other way, it's 10 degrees off of east. And that's why instead of being 090, it's 080. 
Look at our shadow over there to the right. Yeah. It's kind of cool, huh? So nobody does this on the big island? Uh, there were some, there was a really good guy and he sold his business to a couple of flakes and I don't think that they're doing it. There's a really, really good guy that does it on Maui. Okay, well, out of... Uh... Hana. Oh, really? Yep. He's really good, Armin. He'll put you in the front seat too, for sure. He's a big, tall German guy and uh, he'll, he'll love to have you in the front seat. He has uh, better weather than we have, so uh, he can get you in the front seat. So I would highly recommend if you get a chance. Are you going to Maui? Uh, not this time, we uh, did last time. So. Okay, well his company is called Hang Glide Maui. Okay. And he is really good. He's got more experience than Denise or I. Flies the exact same model aircraft, a, a real nice brand new one. Uh -huh. He's into red and black and white and silver, so that's his colors. Okay. Uh, he's got the only hangar at the Hana Airport. He's not open every day, and he quit advertising long ago. So you'd want to call uh, and make a reservation earlier in your trip sure. would be the way to go. Definitely would want to do that. Cool. I love. I would love to see the view from the air from that side of the. Oh air. yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do a few turning off things. Now it'll help me uh, to get you out if you just stay seated for a moment, okay. but put your left foot outside the aircraft. Okay. All righty, aloha from the North Shore.